would share with you. Ever since I was young, there was always a whole bunch of Terry Pratchett books in the house. So Terry Pratchett is not only one of my I always love reading well-used paperback books because they're all soft and you don't have to worry about bending them or staining the pages or anything like that because everything is already done. You just have to make sure you don't miss some of his unpublished work gets published. Just read this. Terry Pratchett is one of the most popular authors writing today. He lives behind a keyboard in Wiltshire and says he doesn't want to get to life because it feels as though he's trying to leave the three already. He was appointed OPE in 1998 and his first Discworld novel for children, The Amazing Morris and His Educated Rodents, was awarded the 2001 Carnegie Medal. Night Watch is the 27th novel in his phenomenally successful Discworld series. 27. So
Living in the past is hard. Dying in the past is incredibly easy. But he must survive because he has one job to do. He must track down a murderer, teach his younger self how to be a copper, and change the outcome of a bloody rebellion. There's a problem if he wins. He's got no wife, no child, no future. A discworld tale of one city with a full chorus of street urchins, ladies of negotiable affection, rebels, secret policemen, and other children. actually read for you guys, especially with copyright issues. Maybe a few pages would be alright. Okay, so here is a little map. the center of town of Ankhmor Pok. The glorious People's Republic of Treacle Mine Road. Truth, justice, freedom, reasonably priced love, and a heart Respond to the street names or the alley names. So we have number one here, which is Knuckle Passage. Number two, Wernigig Alley. Three, Clatchian Takeaway. Four, Snigs Alley. Section of Old City Wall. Got one here, one here. So that's the Old City Wall. Number six. It's here. Ham Alley. Number seven is the Blacksmiths. Eight is Cat Mere 
Street, 9 Jubal Alley, 10 Sweetheart Lane, 11 Harry Supples. I guess these are all useful places to know for the story. So you can revert back to the map during during the story. Twelve. The job shop. Thirteen. Twinkle Street. Fourteen. Taylor. Turn again lane. Sixteen candle makers. Okay, seventeen. Here. It's called Elsewhere Alley. So is eighteen. So is nineteen. So is twenty. Twenty-one. is Balancing Monk's Hospital and 22 and 3 are also called Elsewhere Alley 24, where's that? Here 24 is Stale Walk 25 is Pottery 26 is Building Supplies 27 is Fern <laughs> Foreign building. 28 is pawnbroker and 29 is bro sunshine sun's shonky shop. Wow. Bro sunshine sun's shonky shop. Nice. shaving before he did anything about it. Then he put his jacket on and strolled out into the wonderful late spring morning. Birds sang in the trees, bees buzzed in the blossom. The sky was hazy though, and thunderheads on the horizon threatened rain later. But for now, the air was hot and heavy, and in the old cesspit behind the gardener's shed, a young man was treading water. Well, treading anyway. Fine stood back a little way and lit a cigar. It probably wouldn't be a good idea to employ naked flame any near to the pit. The fall from the shed roof had broken the crust. Good morning, he said cheerfully. Good morning, your grace, said the industrious treadler. The voice was higher pitched than Vines expected, and he realised that most unusually, the young man in the pit was in fact a young woman. It wasn't entirely unexpected. The Assassin's Guild was aware that women were at least equal to their brothers when it came to inventive killing. But it nevertheless changed the situation somewhat. I believe we've met, said Vimes. I'll 
thought, I see you know who I am. Wake, sir, said the swimmer. Jocasta wakes. Honor to meet you, your grace. Wake, say, said Vimes. Famous family in the guild. Sir will do, by the way. I think I once broke your father's leg. Yes, sir. He has to be remembered to you, said Jocosta. You are a bit young to be sent on this contract, aren't you? said Vines. Not a contract, sir, said Jocosta, still paddling. Come now, Miss Wicks. The price on my head is at least... The Guild Council put it in a pinch, sir said the docked swimmer. You're off the register. They're not accepting contracts on you at present. Good grief, why not? You couldn't say, sir, said Miss Wiggs. Her patient struggles had brought her to the edge of the pit, and now she was finding that the brickwork was in very good repair, quite slippery, and offered no handholds. Vimes knew this, because he'd spent several hours one afternoon carefully arranging that this should be so. So, why were you sent then? Miss Band sent me, as an exercise, said Jocasta. I say, these blicks are really jolly tricky, aren't they? Yes, said Vines, they are. Have you been rude to Miss Bound lately? Upset her in any way? Oh no, Your Grace. But she did say I was getting overconfident and would benefit from some advanced field work. Ah, oh, I see. Vimes tried to recall Miss Alice Band, one of the Assassin's Guild's stricter teachers. She was, he'd heard, very hot on practical lessons. So, she sent you to kill me then, he said. No, sir. It's an exercise. I don't even have any crossbow bolts. I just had to find a spot where I could get you in my sights and then report back. She'd believe you? Of course, sir, said Jocosta, looking rather hurt. Guilt honour, sir. Fines took a deep breath. You see, Miss Wiggs, quite a few of your chums have tried to kill me at home in recent years, as you might expect. I take a dim view of this. Easy to see why, sir, said Jocosta, in the voice of one who knows that their only hope of escaping from their present predicament is reliant on the goodwill of another person who has no pressing reasons to have any. And so you'd be amazed at the bloody trap there are around this place, Vimes went on. Some of them are pretty cunning, even if I say so myself. I certainly never expected the tiles on the shed to shift like that, sir. They're on greased rails, said Vimes. Well done, sir. And quite a few of the traps drop you onto something deadly, said Vimes. Lucky for me I fell into this one, huh, sir? Oh, that one's deadly too, said Vines. Eventually deadly, he sighed. He really wanted to discourage this sort of thing, but they'd put him off the register. It wasn't that he'd like being shot at by 
hooded figures in the temporary employment of his many and varied enemies, but he'd always looked at it as some kind of vote of confidence. It showed that he was annoying the rich and arrogant people who ought to be annoyed. Besides, the assassin's guilt was easy to outwit. They had strict rules, which they followed quite honourably, and this was fine by Vines, who, in certain practical areas, had no rules whatsoever. Off the register, eh? The only other person not on it anymore, it was rumoured, was Lord Itinary, the patrician. The assassins understood the political game in the city better than anyone. And if they took you off the register, it was because they felt your departure would not only spoil the game, but also smash the board. I'd be jolly grateful if you could pull me out, sir, said Jocosta. What? Oh. Yes, sorry, I've got clean clothes on, said Vines. But when I get back to the house, I'll tell the butler to come down here with a ladder. How about that? Thank you very much, sir. Nice to have met you, sir. Vines strolled back to the house. Off the register. Was he allowed to appeal? Perhaps they thought. The scent rolled over him. He looked up. Overhead, a lilac tree was in bloom. I think I'll stop there for tonight. We're just on page 14. Let me know in the comments.